Sounds healthy, doesn't it? <laughs> Just the same as my voice, apparently. Monday, whoa, another day, let's crack on. So today, as you can see, which you can't right now, but you can now, this is the office. I am downstairs. Monday is starting very simply. I've got client check-ins. I've got a new client I've got to set up today. Very good, solid start to the week. Then we're going to the gym. I've got a big session plan because this week, me and all the boys, me, John, Zach and Sonny, we're off to Berlin. We're going to Grenzganger, CrossFit Grenzganger in Berlin to do a seminar, which is going to be super exciting. Still tickets available, so if you want to know more about it, the details will be in the Desi box as always. So let me just catch up with my clients and then we can go and play. Call's done. Ah, oh, just caught up with a new client, he's an absolute legend, so I'm really excited to be working with him. Now, I need to get my bag packed, I need to get to the gym, and I think I need to do some heavy lifting. Anyway, if you wanna know any more about the TLM coaching, all the details are in the description box below, just send us an email through. If you wanna be coached by myself or John, email is there, send it over, we'll send you the details. Promise not to do loads of weird hand movements and stuff, and it'll be good. Right, I think I'm gonna get a Starbucks. Do I get a Starbucks on the way to the gym? Also, we're going to do a back cave episode today. Yeah. Oh, God. My skin's really bad today. Right, let's go. We are at the box, but more importantly... Oh, that's so hot. Come in! The Baywatch boys are in. That's a cute little vest. Is it because you're obscenely large or the vest is obscenely small? This is, this is I you don't know making, which one's more insulting or not, this, I can't work it out. This is you making your random appearance in each vlog. Random appearance, cameo. <laughs> one sweet. What we're doing? Two reps, all balls. Two reps, dumbbell snatch. Two burpees. Four reps, four reps, 12 minutes. Also, well done. You won your first, well, not your first comp. Your now, first, first pairs mixed, comp. Mixed comp with Shell, yeah, at the weekend, didn't you? And then did 10k PB yesterday. It's been a little bit slower than somebody I know. Right, yeah, yeah, he gave it a good go. <laughs> Yeah, I'm working out there. <laughs> right, I'm starting with squats, and it looks like, I don't know whose dog this is, I'm very chilled, but regardless, they're gonna be my mascot today. This is over there, she's looking really keen to train right now. She's like, this is my second time in today. I've gotta to get it done, but I'm not sure whether I'm feeling it or not. I want to, but I don't. I want to, but I don't. I I could adopt that exact same feeling for my back squats. So we're going to get that, and then I'm going to do a disgusting Metcon, even though it's like 30 degrees outside, because these boys, the Baywatch boys over there, are doing their thing, so I need to get involved and do something. Time to put the vinegar knee sleeves on. Oh. Quick update, JC, I've just spoken to him, he was coming to train, or I thought he was coming to train, but he's just said I think he's having the whole week off, because um, he's probably mentioned it in a few vlogs about the nerve pain behind his knee, and also he gets bursitis on the front of his knee, because he's obscenely long femurs. Um, it's got to the point where it's just too much for him, so I think he's actually taking this whole week off training, which kind of sucks, because I like training with him, but it's about the greater good. He needs to make sure that his injury's fixed, so I think he's going to see Rob, the specialist who helped with his shoulder tomorrow, and he's gonna be doing a lot more admin, so you might not see him too much in the vlogs, but I'll just try and grab him where I can. So I brought in the new weighted rope that Warburton sent over. And Matt's... <laughs> <laughs> How much harder is that? I thought two double unders would definitely count. My turn. It's gonna be interesting, isn't it? I won't be going straight into double unders like I would on a normal rope. Sure. You it already see. feels horrible. Yeah. 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 Oh, that is horrible. The grimace, man, I'm going to do dead bug face to get it down. Practice. <laughs> that is heavy. It's going to be a new challenge.
but the goal is three sets of eight at 130. Might be a tad optimistic as to how hard 120 felt. So, uh, see so yeah, how we go. <laughs> one. Yes, it's still one set. Two. Oh, that hurts a lot. My legs feel so cooked. One more set. Come on. Three. Oh, that hurt more mentally than physically today. But it's so warm. Next up, I'm gonna do some jerks because that is, at the moment, by far my weakest part of my lifting. Snatch is a close second, technically, but jerks, like, you know, your clean and jerk should be in the relative kind of realm of each other. And my clean is 120, and my jerk's only 105. And that's because of just how poor my technique is, so do some technique and warm up and build up to a heavy for the day with that one now. Let's do some lifting. freeze 110 kilos this would be a five kilo pb for me on the jerk but i just wanted to freeze frame it because you know what it's a terrible lift and i want to help people with lifting and if they're struggling with the same things as me then happy days we're all in the same boat together at the end of the day so split jerk one huge huge cue that sunny always gives me when i lift with him is that hands through your ears. So when you dip and drive and that bar's going up over your head, you have to bang your head through forward, arms are going up and it's almost like you're pushing the arms back in some ways. Not that that actually happens like that, but you've got to get stacked underneath that bar nice and solid. Yes, there is a million things going wrong with from the hips down and I need to sort that out as well, but that is one huge thing that I've been really struggling with in my lifts is getting that head through because as you can see, as I've driven up, I haven't even fully extended there. And I know you just know from the second you start to lean back that that bar is not going up overhead. So if it's something that you struggle with, I think one thing that I'm actually going to start bringing in is behind the head jerks because then the bar's already behind and you can just press up and get underneath it. Um, I think one of my biggest problems is the fact that all those years of bro lifting and shoulder pressing and shoulder pressing quite poorly is let, has taught me to lean back as soon as the bar goes up overhead. So if that's something you've been doing and you're getting into cleaning jerks and stuff and you're struggling, always losing it out front then it might be something a good cue that you can remember every now and again as Sonny says push your hands through your ears lad <laughs> well, I popped outside it's a little bit bright let me just see if I can tone that down a little bit there we go. Um, there's a class going on and it's really, really loud, which is amazing, good atmosphere for me. Stop snatching, got that out of my system, I just needed to pull a few snatches. You know what it's like if you're in the lifting environment and everyone's snatching, you're like, I wanna snatch. But now, I'm gonna do a little conditioning session. I've got 60 kilos on a flat bench, I'm gonna do 10 reps on there, and then I'm gonna do 10, no, 15 more balls, sorry. And then also it's gonna be 30 skips with a heavy rope. I've got that from Walderson. It's a beaut, it's super tough to use, but it's really, really good. It's gonna help my double unders no end and my wrist strength. So if you wanna know more about it, I'm gonna put a link to it downstairs because I've only used it a couple of times and I absolutely love it already. So let's go get sweaty. <laughs>
Sit down, my man. Have a good day. Probably the most graphic up nostril angle ever. But that session was hard. The thing is, in the UK, we're not used to having such beautiful weather all the time. So, like, at least in places like Australia, they have air conditioning and houses and buildings and all that kind of stuff to kind of manage the heat. Here, yeah, it's so warm. So, that was a real mental grind. Anyone else feeling like that? Was that Sometimes I really beat myself up, even though I got, had a really good session. I even ended up snatching, and I didn't plan to snatch. It feels like, because it's really hard from the start of the session, sometimes I beat myself up mentally, feeling like it was a really hard session and I did really crap just because mentally it was a grind. I don't know if you know what I mean. If you do, and you get like that sometimes, put a comment below just so it actually makes me feel a little bit more human. But, um, oh, tip here. If you run the best little roast potatoes, I got this recipe from John's brother-in-law, Hasty or Haste Kitchen. Oven, 240 degrees. Maris pipe the potatoes. Wash them, cut them in half, and I chuck them in a tray with a couple of healthy glugs of extra virgin olive oil, salt and pepper seasoning, and also some thyme. Shake them all up and cook them for 25 to 30 minutes maximum. They come out absolute dream boats. Oh yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Food done, backpacked. Let's go and say hello to Johnny Boy. This one's set. This one, this one's set. Don't, don't step on. You can go. That one, that one. <laughs> John, what are you doing, mate? Turn on the floor. Are you, you're not a tradie anymore. No, so mate. I can step here. Yeah, and then the next one in front of it. Yeah. Uh, well, they look very nice. Yeah, what do you want to do? How you doing, buddy? Sweaty. I've been telling everyone you're not training this week. I'm taking a week off. Because your stupid long legs. Oh, I just still got that little nerve twinging in my neck, leg, and I've seen like four or five different people, and no one really knows what it is. And it's when I get down to the lower part of the squat, yeah. but it's starting a little bit worse. And it's now it's not just when I'm training; it's when I'm living normal life. And I was like, "What's the point?" At that point, you take some time off. You're nearly 31, mate. You can't be. Mate, I've got like, like that. six months. Don't be tired of me with your brush. <laughs> you're you're in the 31 club. So I thought I'd uh, this week I'd get some bits in the house done, like the floor. I'm gonna catch up with all my client stuff in a bit. And then, yeah, then we're good. Right, quick stop at JC's. He's got the footage that he needs for editing an awesome collaboration, actually, we've just done with O2 Touch Rugby. It was very fun, and it included some massive England rugby players, so that's coming your way soon, which is very exciting. Now I need to go home, and we need to go to the Batcave to have a chat. Yeah! Batcave. Let's freaking do this. This one is gonna help so many people simplify their fat loss, simplify their nutrition very, very quickly. Because if you've asked this question, I'm gonna answer it for you and hopefully give you a lot more hope. The question was, what is the best meal to eat before a workout? And what is the best meal to eat after a workout? And also, what is the best pre-workout to have? The context is, this was from a beginner just about to start our nutrition and training journey, wants to lose fat. Amazing, right? Very common question that I get asked by beginners because they're very keen. They wanna get going, they wanna learn. They've started to read magazines, they've seen other athletes. Sorry, I've got something that's absolutely chewing the inside of my eyeball. Um, and it's, I can see where the question comes from, but the education side of me has to go, right, put the freaking brakes on here because if your goal is to lose fat or to lose weight, whatever you want to call it, you know, let's just generalize it as weight. It helps. A lot more people understand it like that. Let's not get too shy and freaking deafic. I want you to lose fat. A lot of people want to lose weight. Um, the number one thing that we need to talk about is basic calorie deficit, which is achieved via energy balance. You turn around eating more calories and you take, burning more calories than you take in. We know that. We don't have to go over it and over it again. Or you're moving more. You know, essentially, you're in a basic deficit. If you don't understand what that is, watch the video I talked about with TDEE, it will cover all of that for you. A basic caloric deficit, meaning you are burning more energy than you're taking in per day, means you're gonna lose weight, right? As long as there's no other crazy stuff going on, blah, blah, blah. Done, that's out of the way, right? So if you're coming to me and asking the question of, or your coach, and saying, what should I have before a workout? The coach should normally, first and foremost, the response should be, how many calories do you need a day though? And if you don't know the answer to that and you don't know rough calories, rough macros that you should be having before that, 
don't really worry about what you're gonna be having before your workout. Yes, you don't wanna go and have a ton of sugar before you go and work out. Yes, you don't wanna go and down a Lucas A before you go in the gym because you're probably just gonna burn off fat. You're not really gonna burn off any fat or stored energy that you've got in your body. There's, yes, there's definitely more optimal or suboptimal things that you could have pre-workout. But my standpoint as a coach, to start with, if you've got all these new stimulations going on, you go into the gym, maybe a new environment you've never been in, I'm gonna ask you to start looking at your cal calories and tracking your macros a little bit more closely to start with, you know, it's not a long-term thing, but short-term, I'm gonna educate you and go, look, go and put this in my fitness pal, go and put it into an online calculator, and you will start to understand what macros and calories are in certain foods, so you're not just eating foods and having no connection to it in an educational sense whatsoever. I'm, not, I'm gonna turn around and say to you, look, for instance, you've got to eat 1,500 calories, for a really poor example. You've got to eat 1,500 calories a day. You know what, as long as you're eating your 1,500 calories a day and you're in a basic deficit and your training is awesome, I don't care what you eat before you go for a workout. Simple as that, because it's, it's, not, it's about a cumulative effect. That's such a small, minor thing that we need to worry about. And that's where the twos and the threes and the four percents right at the end come from. It's like, if you've got a little bit more weight that you wanna lose, or you wanna perform a little bit more effectively in a workout long term, when it starts to get to a point where it's like, we're getting those sticking points, we're like, why is it just not happening? It's just, this seems to be harder. This, it's all the niggly little bits right at the end of your training or your fat loss goal. That's when we can start looking at meal placements and certain things to go in at certain times. To start with, you know, if you are starting on this fat loss journey, don't worry about eating windows. Don't worry about what to have before and after a workout. Don't worry about supplements. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Don't worry about eating carbs after six. Don't worry about any of it. Don't worry about any of it. Literally, if you are watching this video and you're like, I need to start or I've started and I'm just not sure what to do. First thing, and the only thing you need to do right now. First, establish a routine. Second, Know how many calories you should be eating a day, which will uh, relax, relax, God, come on brain. Know how many calories you should be eating a day or find out how many calories you should be eating a day to go alongside your goals, right? And then start tracking them, hitting those calories every day. See what happens. Weigh yourself in two to three weeks time, weigh yourself obviously at the start date, two to three weeks time, see what happens. That is all you need to worry about. You will get all the feedback from your body. So I hope this really helped. It's just one of those ones where I'm like, it's very easy to complicate things because normally, Nine times out of 10 when we see these pre-workouts, this meal before, this meal afterwards, it's coming from somebody who's up here. You know, they're athletes, they're right at the pinnacle and they're talking about their meal placements and separating their protein for optimal stimulation of protein synthesis and all that kind of stuff. Great, great for them, but they need that. You don't, I don't. You know, to start with, it is simple. Energy balance, calories as a whole over the day, calories as a whole over the week. Use simple, simple things to start with. We can complicate it further down the line. If you are at that point and you want me to complicate it more, let me know in the comments below and I can go to that point. Otherwise, just remember, calories in versus calories out is all you need to worry about right now. And there we go, another back cave subject done. If you enjoyed it, give it a massive thumbs up. I'm gonna go and program some of my clients. So I've got a very busy afternoon now, which is really exciting, I love doing that. Um, I hope you enjoyed the vlog. Thank you all so much for watching as always. Got some awesome content coming your way. As I briefly mentioned about one part of it earlier today, it was good fun. Um, really enjoying vlogging again, guys. If you've got any more subjects you want me to bring to the Batcave, let me know below and I will happily do that for you. Have a great evening, great day. Hope you're enjoying the sun if you're in the UK. It's currently 32 and a half degrees. I am literally swimming in here. Leave you with that one.